and the parallel between that astrology and the astrology of Nicholas in the book or in the tale is that Nicholas uses his astrology and his knowledge about the stars to deceive John and you can see how John then becomes representative of Christ because Nicholas purposely sets out to deceive John through his knowledge of astrology. But finally, a fourth view that the critics put make about the Canterbury Tales, about the Miller's Tale, is that of deceit. Now you can see clearly that the deceit is pretty much the controlling idea throughout the whole tale. First of all, Allison deceives John when she continuously tries to um, be with um, Nicholas throughout the play, throughout the tale. And she says, well, everything will be fine as long as he doesn't find out. She's practicing deceit in many ways by trying to do acts which she knows John will be greatly upset about, but she still goes on to proceed with them. Now, a second example of deceit in the Miller's tale is as Nicholas tricks John. This was one of the major turning points in the tale. Nicholas tells John that the flood is coming, and John goes ahead and builds the boat, which pretty much leads to the end and the, the poetic justice, which was mentioned in the first critical summary. A third, um, a third example of the deceit development is when Absalom tricks Allison and Nicholas towards the end of the story. And Absalom comes back and he says, oh, uh, Allison, I want to give you this gold ring. But actually, what he ends up doing is stabbing Nicholas in the rear with the hot poker, which is another form of deceit and it's sort of instrumental to the plot. And finally, the fourth example of deceit is when Allison deceives Absalom. Allison says, come here, I'm going to give you a kiss and Absalom proceeds to go ahead and, and kiss her buttocks. So uh, that's kind of a crude example, but that's why the play is interesting, and you can see why it's a fabulio. One important thing to remember about the Miller's Tale is its relationship to the rest of the Canterbury Tales. Specifically, the, the Miller's Tale is designed to provoke anger in the Reeve. The Reeve himself is a carpenter, and you can see the comparison between the Reeve and John. And John is really, really, in the end, gets punished in the, play, in the tale for being so stupid and gullible. And this really angers the Reeve, and you'll see how that's important when you proceed and read the Reeve's, Reeve's tale later. It goes without saying that Nicholas caused quite a little strain between John and Allison. Allison tried to act as if nothing had happened. Despite third-degree burns, though, Nicholas had satisfied smile on his face for longer than a week. Naturally, John failed to appreciate any of it. He still had a, his head ache from falling, and he still had many broken bones. Being civilized English gentlemen, they decided to settle this conflict not in an English tavern, as some would have done, but rather in an English court. What follows now is a factual reenactment of the litigation occurring right now between John and between Nicholas. John, of course, the plaintiff, suing Nicholas for damages caused to his marriage. We turn you now to the courtroom. Dun, dun. This, is this is Divorce Court, presided over by Judge Keen William. In today's cases, Allison is suing John on the grounds of mental cruelty and random destruction. John is countersuing Allison for adultery and mental cruelty. He is also suing Nicholas for physical and mental cruelty. Nicholas is suing Absalom for physical abuse, and Absalom is suing Allison and Nicholas for mental cruelty. Also, the blacksmith is suing Absalom for stealing his red-hot poker. And now, let the cases begin. Mr. Wapner, you may now present your case. My client is suing Allison on the grounds of physical and mental cruelty, and also on adultery. He's also suing Nicholas on the grounds of physical and mental cruelty. You can now show me your first witness. Mr. John. I'll tell the truth, really. What is your name, sir? John. How was Allison at the beginning of your marriage? She was young and beautiful and everything I ever wanted in her wife. But then she changed. Have you treated Allison fairly? I've treated her more than fairly. I've given her everything she could want and everything she needed. Have you provided her with food? Sustenance. I've given her food, clothing, everything she needs, and but she still she keeps leaving, and she's always gone, and I never know where she is. I don't trust her at all. Have you caused her to seek another man in any way? No, I've given her no reason to go to another man. I'm always there. I give her everything she wants. 
When did you believe that Allison was all well, fooling around? Well, she was gone, and I never knew where she was. And she'd be she'd be at other people's houses, and and I just don't know what she's doing. So you have strong suspicions? Yes, very strong suspicions. Um, when did you first see Allison committing adultery? I was sitting very comfortably in my bathtub, and it fell through the attic, and I caught Nicholas and Allison red-handed committing adultery. So it's safe to conclude that Allison is an adulteress and has turned into a, a slut? Yes, definitely. She's an adulteress. I don't trust her at all. I don't want to have anything to do with her. She's, she's ruined my life and destroyed my marriage. I have no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Mr. Skank, would you like to cross-examine this witness? Yes, sir. John, how old are you? Uh, 50 or 55. Now, how old is your wife? Um, 10 or 20. Wouldn't you say that this is a rather large age difference? Well, I guess maybe. Aren't you concerned that your wife will seek other companionship? Mm, yeah, a little bit. She, she's, she might. So you could say you're jealous? Uh, you, you could put it that way if you want to, I guess. And John, just what were you doing in a bathtub in the attic? So you persecuted your wife, didn't you? Admit it. You forced her to perform weird sexual acts. You hated her. You hate everyone. You spied on her. You're scum and sleaze, and you would have killed her given the chance. No, no, further questions, no it's all lies. You put John, that into my John, I didn't say sit that. Down. Sit down, John. I'm getting out of here. There's no way. Mr. Wapner, you may now present your next witness. I'd like to call Mr. Absalom to the stand. Mr. Absalom, please take the stand. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell the truth. What is your name, sir? Absalom. <laughs> is that, like, for real? Yeah, Absalom with an A. Do your friends call anything else? No, just Absalom. Oh, Get on okay. with it. Did you see Nicholas and Allison committing adultery? I certainly did. One night when I was <clears throat> going over to John, the carpenter's house, I distinctly saw the two of them engaged in adulterous relations. Not only that, but they played cruel, sadistic jokes on me. And I want to see both of these sickos brought to justice. Thank you, Your Honor. I have no further questions. Mr. Skank, would you care to cross-examine this witness? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Specifically, Mr. Absalon, what sort of sadistic jokes did they play on you? Never mind. That's, that's not important. That has Your nothing Honor, to do with this. Please allow me to introduce Exhibit A. Didn't you steal this poker from the blacksmith? Well, no, I, di I didn't steal anything. I just I just borrowed it, Your Honor. It, I was Did, going to give it back. Didn't you take this borrowed poker and place it red hot upon the buttocks of Nicholas? Well, d yes, but... Then isn't your credibility as a witness totally destroyed? Because you're not only a thief, but also a sadistic mutilator? No further questions, Your Honor. I, I, that's... No, that's not... Uh, uh. I'm tired. As Mr. Absalom leaves the stand, we now have time for a short break. Sword, sword, swords, have we ever got swords? Check out this handy baby from Arabia. I'm talking this is one quality piece of merchandise. You can use this anytime, day or night. Kill your best friend, kill your worst enemy, it makes no difference. Not only have we got swords, but we've got weapons. This is one serious club I'm talking about. Solid wood, kill anyone, one chop. Look what we got here. Authentic boomerang from the roads of Australia. You can do anything you want this with. You can toss it at just about anyone, kill them in one blow. Looky what else we got here. A walking stick, you might say, right? Big deal, in case I limp. No way, because one twist to the knob and a pull, it's another sword. That's right, you can kill anyone in one jab. It's lethal weapon time, I'm talking. Uh, and the boomerang again is mighty good fun. And we're talking here, another sword. What's this? Yes, an entire scimitar in one shot. Take out nine or ten little pygmies with this baby, I'll tell you. And there's the boomerang again. I'm telling you, this baby really works. And here we got another knife. I'm talking Rambo would kill for this baby. This is a real knife. And look what we got here, a baby knife in case you got a baby to kill. Yes, I'm talking, this is some lethal weaponry here. And the coup de gras, a red hot poker. There goes the boomerang again. And this poker, I'm talking you, when you make it red hot, place it up on your worst enemy's buttocks, you can pretty much take care of anyone. So come on down to our sword shop. Get a boomerang, get a red hot poker, or get a sword. You'll be pleased every single time.
Mr. Skank, you may present your first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to call Allison to the stand. Allison, please take the stand. I promise to tell the truth. Allison, please tell us what your true relationship with Nicholas is. He's my tutor. He teaches me about astrology, the stars, and the dark. And why is it that you're asking for a divorce from John? He's terrible to me. He doesn't trust me. He treats me terrible. He doesn't feed me enough. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Wapner, would you care to cross-examine this witness? Yes, I do. What is your name, ma'am? Allison. Has John provided you since your marriage? Not very well. Do you admit that you've committed adultery with Nicholas? No. He's my tutor. I wouldn't do that. Don't you think so, Judge? Oh, yes. You may step down now. Uh, Judge, I, I have one. No further questions. <laughs> Mr. Skank, you may present your next witness. Thank you. I'd like to call Nicholas to the stand. Nicholas, please take the stand. Sure. <sighs> Don't worry. I'll tell the truth. <sighs> Nicholas. What is your relationship with Allison? Allison? I'm her tutor. Uh, I teach her astrology, the stars, about the dark. In other words, you haven't done anything that could be construed as adulterous with Allison? Adultery? Of course not. I, I certainly wouldn't think doing anything so well. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. <sighs> Mr. Wapner, you may cross-examine this witness. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nicholas, where were you on the night of the incident? <sighs> incident? I don't seem to recall any incident, sir. Do you? Uh, guess not. Um, hmm. Mr. Nicholas, did you do nothing? You didn't do anything to endanger the marriage of Allison and John, did you? Of course not. Allison and I were friends. I'm her tutor. And I wouldn't do anything of the sort. And so, Allison should win the case? Certainly she should. No further questions, Your Honor. You may sit down, Mr. Nichols. Thank you. We shall return in a moment for Judge Williams' decision. The evidence of this case clearly shows the trauma which Allison has experienced. I therefore award all property to Allison for the or terrible ordeal which she has been sent through. Thank you for watching Divorce Court. Cut. Ready to go, Judge? Absolutely. More than ready.